Good morning, fellow privateers. Welcome to the week ahead outlook from Privateer FX. Hope everyone had a good weekend. Holidays are fast approaching. Spent most of my weekend hanging Christmas lights, getting a tree, all the other cheerful holiday events that uh, one must do this time of year. I've got the um, economic calendar here. It's from our friends at Forex Live. And you can see, just looking at today here, um, we get RBA, well, this is a Monday, my, Monday afternoon, my time. So Tuesday morning in Asia, uh, we have Governor Lowe speaking. I think that's really the only thing on the calendar tomorrow that looks of interest. And then if we scroll down, we've got some more data coming out of China. They had some weak trade data out over the weekend. Let's see if it's on here. Yeah, their exports were weak. You can see here 1.3%. Um, so not a, not a great number, but you know we're not seeing much of a reaction here on the uh, on the Asian open. Um, this is a big week overall, though, for event risk. Uh, we've got a slew of data coming out of the UK, industrial production, um, and their GDP number, which is on Tuesday, London time. Get ZEW out of Germany. This should be interesting. Um, the, it's supposed to improve from a negative two um, to a uh, to a flat reading, but you know everyone's watching the German data very closely as a barometer for overall European growth. Um, what else do we have? Nothing really. Nothing really else on Tuesday. Wednesday, we have some U.S. data. We got uh, CPI, expected 2%. Um, the year-on-year -year number, expected 2%. Month-on-month uh, -month is 0.2. Um, we have the Fed meeting, which always draws interest from the market, even though the, no one's expecting anything out of the Fed. Um, I believe there's about 27 basis points uh, priced in for a cut, but that's for the next 12 months. So, you know, the rate decision is expected to stay on hold. We do have a press conference, which is always entertaining. Um, and then we have the, um, so that, that's on Wednesday. And the twelfth is obviously that's it. That's you know we do have SNB and not expecting anything on the SNB and then the ECB as well is expected to remain um, at negative 0.5 percent. So unchanged there. It'll be Lagarde's first meeting um, and press conference to follow. Um, a few people are. Keeping an eye on this Polaz speech out of the Bank of Canada, which is uh, later morning on, uh, I believe that's Thursday, yes. And then the UK election, which is obviously a, a big deal. Um, it's looking like the Conservative Party will gain the majority. I, I believe they need 320 seats for the majority. Um, you know, for some reason that doesn't happen. God forbid we have a hung parliament, but, um, you know, the betting sites and all the commentators seem to think that they, uh, they should, they should gain those seats and Bojo will remain in charge. Um, that comes out late Thursday. So it'll be Friday morning, Asia. Um, and then on Friday, during the New York hours, we have retail sales. So we'll get the last retail sales number of the year ahead of the holidays, uh, measure the uh, 
strength of the consumer. See what people are out shopping. And you can see they're expecting a better number month on month from uh, 0.2 last month to 0.4. Um, and then on Sunday, so a week from today, we will, that's December 15th, we will know what Trump and G have decided to do if they were going to come up with some sort of announce a skinny deal on tariffs. And Trump has been tweeting a lot over the weekend, and I would imagine he's been extremely active this week, you know, bullying everyone, everyone and anyone. Um, so that, you know, if, if the tariffs go into effect on the 15th Monday on the opener Sunday night, you know, during Asia, Asia's Monday, when the equity markets open back up the futures, um, it'll get, it'll be very ugly. Um, so anyhow, why don't we up to the charts? Um, there were some very tight ranges last week in a lot of things. We're going to look at the weeklies. Um, and you can see here the, um, You can see here the 10-year yield. So this is the yield. We closed last week at 184. We actually had a pretty nice move. Um, let's blow this up a little bit. We had a bullish engulfing week. So we, we made a new low. Monday, there was some selling pressure and yields, buying bonds on some of the trade stuff that Trump was blabbing about. Um, but it closed a week strong. So we're thinking that, you know, we've, we've been calling for this kind of 2% to 210 by year end. And I think if the trade, if tariffs um, do not go into effect, then I could see this market, um, I could see these yields take out this high that we saw a few weeks back and, uh, you know, maybe get up to that target that we've had. I was calling for that, um, you know, for the past month, looking for kind of two to two twelve by year end, and you know, with equity markets closing the year on the highs, and equities are perma bull mode right now. Um, let's just go down the list. Um, here's gold. Gold had a reversal week lower. Again, it rallied early in the week on the tariff stuff, and then reversed lower. You know, this area in here, this 1445 to 1452 um, is going to be support. But this looks like we could take this out. And I think there's a lot of kind of stale gold longs out there um, that they're, they could come under some selling pressure in a year end. Silver, the higher beta version of gold, had a big bearish engulfing, <laughs> made a new high for the week after a couple of um, kind of doji type weeks. And, you know, once when you get these back to back doji type weeks, we expect to see some sort of movement and they really hammered silver on Thursday and Friday. And we closed below this old low um, and kind of right on this weekly low back way back in July when we, you know, we, we bottomed in uh, late May and then we had that huge run up from, um, or is it about 1425 up to, I think it was 1963? Yeah, 1963. Um, so anyhow, so I think that this could follow gold. I could see this retracing more, you know, maybe even getting back down to like 1550 area. Um, copper, let's take a look at copper. Copper's under a little bit of pressure here early in the week, but it had a huge week. Again, similar to, you know, kind of some indecisive day, uh, weeks previously, the previous two weeks. And then we've had this nice close here. Um, I believe it is, uh, let me get the moving average in there. Hold on. I thought I had it. Oh, no, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Bear with me. Go to the daily. I don't have it. Well, the 200-day moving average is around... 273. 
Um, I'm not going to draw it right now, but it, I, I do know it's there and that's where we touched and we are pulling back a little bit um, here in early Asia. But that's, you know, this is a sign of risk on. That was a big, really big day on Friday. Um, we're still keeping our longs. We Let's go back to this daily. Um, we were waiting for a daily close under these lows, 261. We got, we, we got out of the half of our longs on that close that we had, like 260. But the stocks were strong and kind of bouncing and in Asia. I believe it was on that Tuesday. And uh, it just it, it seemed to be a big disconnect. So I, I, I kept some of it. And, um, you know, we've been rewarded here, um, as we see, you know, rallied thir Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. S&Ps are just uh, crazy, crazy bid. Um, you can see this week here, we blow it up a little bit, this green bar. So we sold off down at 3070 area, I think 69-ish was the low, and, uh, and then closed, you know, pretty much where we opened. So we got a a doji week. I mean, it, it sold off aggressively from 31.45. It's easier to see it on the dailies. Um, you know, you can see here, uh, this was uh, Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. So Monday in, uh, I think Trump tweeted around 5 a.m. New York time, and we were sitting here on the highs, um, the all-time highs, and you can see what happened on Monday. It got hit pretty hard, and then Tuesday, there was some decent fall through, and then we had this nice bounce, and it never really looked back. There was a small pullback on Wednesday, and then we, we closed back here, but it is a doji week. Um, tough to say. Again, it's going to be trade-related headlines. Here's NASDAQ, similar. VIX got... Uh, had a nice up move up. I, I think the high and the I thought the high in the VIX was like on a 19 handle last week, but it's showing here um, that it was around 18. And interesting to to note here is that it's still closed higher on the week, even with the equity market being unchanged. So. Something to watch. Um, talk about disconnects. We just looked at that S and P chart, and look at what Dollar Yen is doing. Dollar Yen in a horrible week. Actually, bearish in golf. We made a new high on Monday, and then engulfed the previous week's bar. So something's not quite right. And if I pull up Euro Yen as well. Um, and we're going to look at the dollar index, too. I don't want to forget about that because we're on the cusp of some potential big moves there. But here's your here's yen. So all these yen crosses were weak, even with stocks unchanged. So something is amiss. Um, and one of these markets is not telling the truth. I'm not sure if it's the currencies or if it's the equities. Um, cable, big, big week. Um, I believe cable was, well, Kiwi is the top performer. Cable's up 1.8%. Um, you know, we've been preaching longs. Uh, we got pretty fortunate because we bought some um, over, just over a week ago. And uh, we're seeing some pretty good, pretty good top side here. Um, you know, it's the highest weekly close we've had in ages. Let's take a look at dollar index because we are right near dollar index. Excuse me. I think I'm getting the hiccups, which would be really annoying during this video. Um, pretty ugly week. I mean, we closed off the, off the lows. 97.37 was the low. Closed about 30 cents higher. But you can see here, I'm going to scrunch this puppy up a little bit. I mean, this was our weekly, this was our weekly trend line break, and once we broke it, we we haven't retested that trend line. 
so the, you know we had a nice rally a few weeks back and a little bit of kind of nowhere sideways I mean that doji two weeks ago and then it right out of the gates it got hit um, pretty hard and seasonally December is a tough month for the dollar um, so the, you know the, that's showing up here in the DXY this level here 97.10 looks pretty critical to me we get a break of that um, we're going to go back to the lows that we saw back in June, which was 95.80. And then the euro, and we're also closing under the 200. I don't know why I don't have the 200. Day. Well, that's a, that's a weekly chart, but um, I flipped over to this other chart because I had some DeMarc stuff on the other ones. It's just too messy to look at. Um, here is the euro. Uh, we're still below the 200 day. But we're getting close to closing above it. I believe it's a high 111s. But here's the similar level in Euro that we just saw in the dollar index, the support line in dollar index. So above 111, um, above 111.80, things are going to get interesting. I'm kind of quietly starting to get bearish dollar. I think that a lot of the big boys are going to start. They've been building up some dollar short positions here the past month. It hasn't really done much. Get the feeling they might get it right and, and dollar might come under some heavy selling pressure in uh, the rest of the month and into, into the new year. Um, dollar cat had a, had a, uh, had some big moves. You can see here we sold off in the Bank of Canada. That was Wednesday. A big move down. And then we had the perfect storm on Friday of a stronger than expected U.S. jobs and a weaker, much weaker than expected Canadian jobs report. So we retraced more than half of that. And it looks like it's you know catching a little bit of a bid here um, early in Asia. Um, let's see what Aussie's doing. Aussie's down a little bit on the open. Um, this line's messy. I don't even know why it's still there, but it was the breakout that we had here. We closed back below it, traded below it for a few weeks, and now we close back above it last week. So again, it's, it's just showing um, dollar dollar selling. Uh, Kiwi, the strongest on the board last week, um, they started talking about fiscal stimulus and the like, and it, um, the market started taking out any future rate cuts and uh, Kiwi does well in December as well and you can see here we've had a, a nice little run you know we're only through two weeks of December but it's already gone from 64 ish up to 65 70 I think it was a high so we're expecting this to carry on and I could see by end of year we could be up around maybe to that's that old high here six just just shy of 68 cents um, what else is interesting? Oil, nah. Don't feel like talking about oil. I have no idea what's going on in that market. Um, let me make sure I've got all the event risk covered. So we talked about the elections out of uh, the UK on the 12th. Um, you know, I was looking at some implied vols and expected moves for the week, and <clears throat> the market is not pricing in any real surprises from the key event risk. So the the elections out of the UK are expected to have, keep Bojo in charge. So Sterling ball implied ball is actually pretty tame. And uh, and then if you look at you know some of the risky the risk on risk off you know yen crosses and equities and even gold um, the vols are, are still pretty low. So certainly they're expecting some sort of skinny deal between the U.S. and China. Um, so it's setting itself up for, you know, these are binary events. And uh, if either one of those surprises, this market is going to make a huge move. And we're going to see a, you know, especially if we, if we see a risk off, um, you can see another 
December move that we saw last year where they just hammered equities right into um, Christmas Eve, and I believe the low was put in on Christmas Eve. Here's your Australian. That's not sure why I have this chart up, but then you can see what uh, you can see the sterling strength. I mean, look at all these, look at all these red weeks. I mean, this is going back to early August where we made that top, and we had this bearish engulfing week right here, made a new marginal high, and it just went down one, two, three, four, five, six weeks down, lower lows, lower closes. A little bit of a pause, another bearish engulfing, a little bit of a pause, and it just keeps going. So at some point, this is probably a fade. And I'm wondering, with this election, assuming all goes well for Bojo, if cable is not a uh, sell the fact, my guess it probably is. And uh, that might be from another 150 points higher than here, maybe a 133-ish. Um, there's 133.80, which is the high back in spring. I think it was March. Um, but I could see uh, that that might be a, a decent setup where you can sell the you can sell the fact. Anyhow, this video is going on really quite long. Um, it's almost my bedtime. So we will update you throughout the week when uh, when and if. If there's anything worth talking about, you follow us on Twitter, like us on Twitter, watch our YouTube videos, and um, my partner is traveling. Don't know if he'll be doing the morning, uh, the morning uh, updates or not. So keep an eye on Twitter, and uh, you'll see if we're posting anything. Right. Good luck this week. And uh, we'll speak to you, uh, we'll speak to you throughout the week. And if I don't, you don't hear from me, I'll be back next uh, next Sunday to report on the China U.S. tariff news because all of that should be hitting the wires um, about a week from today. All right. Good luck trading. We'll speak to you. Cheers.